Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at fiduciary income tax return to be more specific estates and trust which which goes on 10 form 1041. Now before you understand 1041 form 1041 you have to understand what is an estate what is a trust so in this session we're going to be looking at the elements of estates and trust. Now before we start I would like to remind you that if you are an accounting student this topic is covered in your income tax course usually it's not but it's required because it is covered on the CPA exam. So often students, they graduate and they don't know anything about this topic by the time they get to the CPA exam. So if you're taking your CPA exam, what I'm gonna be offering you is an additional supplemental course in addition to your CPA review course. So if you're taking a CPA review course, that's great. What I offer is something different. I offer explanation, detailed explanation, like what you skip in college or what you did not learn in college or what you learned in college and you forgot. The CPA review course, they don't teach you the material, they review it with you. They assume you already know it. So here's my offer to you, here's my challenge. Are you willing to spend $29 or $30 just to try out, to see if my system works? And if it works, excellent, you're going to be able to add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. And what I suggest you do, if not for anything, check out my website to see how well is your university doing on the CPA exam. Because that's going to tell you how well are you prepared generally, because it's a good indication of the rigor of your accounting program. Also, I do have other accounting, finance, audit courses. Please check them out. Also, connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Also, check it. Check my LinkedIn recommendation where people already used my system to pass the exam and see what they say about my system. Please like this recording, share it, and subscribe to my YouTube. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So, where does the form 1041 estate and trust fits in our tax life? Well, when we are alive, we are as, as, as individuals, we'll have to fill out our 1040 on a yearly basis. Then if we have a C corporation, then we have to fill out form 1120. If we are an S corporation, then we have to fill out the form 1120S and everything flows to the shareholder through K1. If we have a partnership, we fill out form 1065. Also, it's a tax flow entity. It goes to, everything goes to the partners on form K1. Now we are looking at form 1041. 1041 is very similar, very similar to form 1065 and te form 1120S. It means it's a conduit. It's a tax flow entity. So everything from 1041, it's going to go to the K1s. Who are the K1s? Who, who, who gets to the K1s? The beneficiaries. And we'll talk about this shortly. Now we want to make sure we're aware that we still have to fill out sometime form 709, which is this is the gift tax and this is filled out as needed because a lot of people confuse the gift tax and the estate tax, which is form 706 with form 1041. 706, it sounds like estate tax, estate tax. Well, this is not the same thing as estate and trust. Estate tax is filled out nine months after the death of the individual, and this is where they value their assets and they pay taxes to the government one time, okay? 1041 is a little different, and this is what we need to talk about. So you need to understand what is an estate, what is a trust, so you'll be able to understand how 1041 works. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about a trust versus estate. What is a trust and what is an estate? Well, a trust, it can be created anytime while you are alive, you're breathing, oxygen, so on and so forth. It's in, basically, it's an arrangement. It's a contract. Think of it as a contract or it's an arrangement entered by declaration through which a, a trustee, and we're going to see who the trustee is, take titles to the property. The property could be a building, stocks, bonds, cash, for the purpose of protecting or con conversing it to the beneficiary. So what does that mean? Let's look at this picture. We have a trust and think of a trust again as a corporation. Trust, it's a legal entity. So you create a trust. Then you are the donor. The donor, let's assume just to make it simple, your rich uncle. Okay, it's the donor. The donor will transfer asset into this trust. They will transfer stocks, bonds, building, cash, gold, any other assets that they want to transfer to this trust. Then the donor will name a trustee. Who's the trustee? Think of the trustee as the donor's lawyer or attorney. They don't have to. They can be 
somebody at a financial institution. They can be any person that they can trust. But the trustee is the person that the donor trust. They're going to take care of these assets and follow their instruction. And what is their instruction? You create a trust to benefit someone for the beneficiaries. So who could be the beneficiaries? The beneficiaries could be charities or they could be your kids, your grandkids, someone you like, a cause that you want to contribute to. So simply put, examples will be trust for minors. What you do is you provide funds for college, for the college education or other needs for, for the minor and the trust will manage this and they will distribute this money because you really want to take care of your kid, of your minors, but you don't want to give them all the assets now. You only want to give them the income. So you put those assets away in a trust and a trustee, a lawyer will take care of this and they will distribute the income as needed to those beneficiaries. Also, another example of trust, and we could have many types of trust, is a divorce trust, where you transfer the assets under the control of the trustee and you will instruct the trustee to use the income to benefit the, you know, the ex-spouse in form, in, in form of child support or alimony payment or whatever the purpose is. So basically, you're trusting someone to take care of this for you. So you put the assets away and they will take care of it. So think of it as you have three parties here. You have the donor. Think of the donor, the person with the money. You have the trustee, the person that's going to take care of your assets and follow your instruction. And you have the beneficiaries, the people or the organizations that's going to benefit from that trust so this is what we are looking at this is the big picture now what's the difference between the trust and an estate well estate occurs only when someone dies so when someone dies basically it becomes an estate or an estate is created when someone dies to distribute their their assets same thing when someone dies rather than a trust it's called an estate and in that estate you have all your assets and we'll talk about estate taxes in a separate in a separate recording but this is what we're looking at too basically the same picture except that the donor here is the decedent so the decedent the person that dies will have all their assets in that estate then we have the executor either again it could be assigned by the person that died before they died under will or it could be assigned by the state but you do you do have a trustee it's called specifically executor then what's going to happen, this individual will manage the estate, then distribute the whatever needed to be distributed, income or assets, to the, benef to the beneficiaries. Notice three parties, the decedent here, the executors, and the beneficiaries. And the estate is basically an artificial, like a corporation, an, an, an artificial legal entity. So this is, this is basically, you want to understand this picture before we start. So remember, trust and estates are separate from the taxpayer, are separate taxpayers. They're artificial taxpayer. They're a legal entity like a C corporation, and they have to fill out form 1041, which we'll look at later on. But this is the big picture. Now, some basic concepts of fiduciary taxation. One, there is no double taxation. What does that mean? So unlike a C corporation where the, the corporation pay taxes, then once the money is transferred to the shareholders, the shareholders pay taxes, there is no double taxation here. So although it looks like a C corporation, but there is no double taxation. In general, so who pays the taxes? Taxable income of the trust or an estate is taxed to the entity itself, to the trust or the estate, or to the beneficiaries to the extent that each receives something called accounting income. Now, what is accounting income? Don't worry about this term. We're going to talk about accounting income later on in the next session. So think of the trust as a conduit. It's basically, it holds the money that it passes it to the beneficiaries, not the shareholders. Now we have beneficiaries. So it's like an, an S corporation and a partnership. It's a fl flow through entity. Now we have to understand a couple few terms about estate and trust. We have something called income and remainder interest. So when you put the assets in that trust or when you put the assets in that estate, the assets they're gonna generate interest from the bonds, dividend from the stocks, rent from the building, they're gonna have they're gonna have income. So you're gonna have one part you're receiving the accounting income of the trust, it's called income interest the people that receive the income and you're going to have at some point people taking the corpus which is the 
principal amount of the trust, like the stocks themselves, the bond, the building, at the termination of the trust as a legal entity. And this, and the pe people that gets this, they, they, they are called, they're getting the remainder interest. So we have the income interest, where you get the income from the bennies for the, for, the, for the beneficiaries, and somebody eventually will get the stocks and the bonds, the remainder interest. Make sure you are familiar with those, understanding those two terms. Let's take a look at a few other topics or additional topics for uh, this session. Is what are the filing requirement tax here and do they have to pay estimated tax payment? Well, fiduciary must file a form 1041 for the estate in the following situation. For an estate with a gross income more than 600 and for a trust that either has any taxable income or if no taxable income has a gross income of 600 or more, the due date of the estate and trust return is the 15th of the fourth month following year end. So what is year end then? Well, for estate, they can use any any, any physical year for the estate. Because when you die, no one, no one knows when you die. Therefore, the government says you can use any physical year. If you're creating a trust, the trust must use, generally speaking, the calendar year. Remember, the trust is the calendar year. The estate, you could use any year. And when is the return due? Like three and a half months after three and a half months after you create the trust. So simply put, if you're using the calendar year, it becomes 4-15, which is April 15, the our tax day. Do they have to make estimated payment? Trust and estates are required to make estimated tax payment using the schedules as individuals. So yes, they do have to. Applies to estate and grantor trust. What is a grantor trust? A grantor trust is when you are all three, when you are the Benny, you are the, uh, you are the creator of the trust, the, the donor, and you are the trustee. Basically, you put your money to manage it in a separate in a separate corporation not separate corporation separate legal entity so applies to those only tax years ending two or more years after the decedent's death because generally speaking when someone dies you know you're not going to have those assets sitting there for for too long maybe a year or two what's going to happen eventually you will distribute the asset and the trust is gone Charitable trust, if you put money away in private foundation, are exempt from making estimated payments. So if you put your money away in it called what's called a charitable trust, what is the charitable trust for? You put that money away and you want to give it to charities. So notice we have different type of trust. Charity trust is basically, as the name suggests, it's just basically you, you, you want to contribute to a cause, uh, to certain charities. Therefore, you put that money away and you let somebody else manage it for you in that trust. We have also simple versus complex trust. We need to know the difference between simple and com complex trust. A simple trust is a trust that's required to distribute its entire accounting income. So don't worry about what is accounting income now. We're going to learn about it in the next session. It means they have to distribute everything to the designated beneficiaries. Also, has no beneficiaries that are qualifying charitable organization. So they don't have charitable organization, qualifying charitable organization, and make no distribution of the trust corpus. What's the trust corpus? Trust corpus is the principal. Remember, what are the principal? The stocks, the bonds, the building, whatever's generating income for that trust. You cannot distribute that. You have a simple trust. What is a complex trust? Anyone, anything that's not a simple trust. So if it's not a simple trust, guess what? It's a complex trust. Now, why do we have to know the difference between simple and complex trust? Because we're gonna have what's called personal exemptions. The government gives you a freebie. If you, if you are dealing with a simple trust, you'll have a personal exemption of $300. Simply put, what does that mean? It means you can deduct $300 from the, in, from the taxable income that you are computing. If it's, if it's a complex trust, it's $100. If we're dealing with an estate, the personal exemption is $600. Basically, what are exemptions? Just, well, if you have $600 or less in your estate, don't worry about it, you know. That 600 will wipe it out. If you have 300, it will be wiped out. That's basically what we are saying. So the first 600, first 300, first 100 dollars of income, they're not taxable. Now in the next session, we're going to start to look at actually some more important topic. I just want to make sure you get the big picture about the trust. How does it work? What's the purpose of it? And we have to learn how to compute accounting income in the trust, taxable income, and most importantly distributable net income or the ni at the end of this recording i'm going to ask you again if you like this recording like it share it and don't forget about your cpa exam if you are studying for the cpa exam i don't replace your cpa course but i can help you improve your score check out my website you're not going to lose anything well you would lose 30 dollars yes if you if you decided to subscribe you would lose 30 dollars 
Well, if you don't like it, you lost it basically. But here's here's the here's basically the trade-off. Are you willing to try something for thirty dollars to take your chances in passing your exam? It may or may not work. It worked for many. Would it work for you? That's the question. Good luck. Study hard, and let's take a look at the next session shortly.